Hey everybody, this is Brijesh here. My dear friends, all of you would have heard about the black money in the Indian economy. You might also be listening about the accounts held in Swiss bank by various Indians to stash their black money. The issue of black money has always been a matter of big debate in India. Switzerland has long been perceived as one of the safest heaven for such funds, trust, especially those set up in jurisdictions like Cayman Islands, Panama and British Virginia Island have often been seen as routes for evading taxes. As per Wikipedia, it was reported in March 2018 that the amount of Indian black money present in Swiss and other offshore banks is estimated to be 300 lakh crores rupees or US 1.5 trillion dollars. On the direction of Honorable Supreme Court, India constituted a special investigation team, SIT, to probe cases of alleged black money of Indians, including funds, is tested abroad in places like Switzerland. At the same time, a number of strategies were deployed by the government to combat the stash funds MINA in both overseas and domestic domain, which included enactment of a new law, amendment in the Anti-Money Laundering Act and compliance window for peoples to declare their hidden assets. The automatic exchange of information framework that has become effective between India and Switzerland since last year. The first set of data under the automatic exchange was shared in September 2019 and would be followed by an annual exercise every September. Several individuals who are suspected to have moved abroad after evading taxes in India are being probed and their banking details are in the process of being shared by the Swiss authorities with the Indian counterparts. A number of trusts set up in overseas tax havens using a complex maze of entities came under the scanner of Indian and Swiss authorities for suspected tax evasion by parking of illicit funds in Switzerland based banks as per notices issued to those entities. The income tax department detected suspected black money running into thousands of crores of rupees post investigations on global leaks about Indians stashing funds abroad and launched prosecution against hundreds of them, including those with accounts in the Geneva branch of HSBC in Switzerland. One such case on black money in which money was stashed in Swiss accounts and in which notices were issued by income tax department has recently been decided by ITAT Mumbai on 16 July 2020. This is very important case on stashing money in Swiss banks and black money. Today I am going to discuss with you this very important judgment delivered by Honorable Mumbai ITAT under Section 68 of the Income Tax Act relating to black money and stashing money in Swiss banks. The main issue of the case is that whether the sum of rupees 196 crores held by HSBC private bank Switzerland in the name of Tharani Family Trust of which the assessee was a beneficiary is accessible as the undisclosed income of the assessee or not. Total 19 grounds were raised by the appealant before Honorable ITAT, out of which ground of reassessment and addition of around rupees 200 crores in the hands of SSE, which was stressed in Swiss Bank, is discussed here. First ground was with respect to validity of reassessment proceeding. Second ground was whether or not CITA was justified in upholding the addition in the hands of the SSE of Rs 196.47 crores being an amount equal to 3.97 crores US dollars held by HSBC Bank in Switzerland in the name of Tharani Family Trust of which the SSE was a beneficiary. Reason for reopening the assessment was like this. The case of Renu Tikamdas Tharani 
was centralized by order under section 127 of the Income Tax Act 1961. Information has been received in respect of her from the Office of DIT Investigation, Bangalore. The information pertains to her having a bank account with HSBC Bank Geneva. From the said bank statement, it is seen that she is having a peak balance of US dollar 3.97 crores in the said account during the period 2005-06. The AO stated that the records of this office show that this amount has not been considered by her in her return of income and this income therefore has escaped assessment. This evidence has come into possession of the AO. Therefore, he has reasons to believe that the income to the extent of at least US dollar 3.96 crores has escaped assessment within the meaning of para D of the explanation 2 of section 147 of the Income Tax Act. Accordingly, notice under section 148 of the Income Tax Act were issued for assessment year 2006-07. The assessee submitted before AO that the assessee has not maintained any bank account with HSBC Bank in Geneva. That the residential status of the SSE during the above assessment year is non resident as defined in section 61 of the Income Tax Act 1961. That the SSE has not stayed in India for more than 182 days in any of the financial years starting from 1st April 2001 to 31st March 2005. Also, the total number of days which she stayed in India during the previous four financial years preceding the financial year ended on 31st March 2006 is less than 365 days and finally during the previous year relevant to the above mentioned assessment the SSC has stayed in India for less than 60 days hence all the conditions as specified in section 61 of the Income Tax Act 1961 has been complied with and accordingly the SSC is a Non resident. It was also submitted before AO that as per the provisions of section 9 1 of the Income Tax Act, the non resident is chargeable to tax only on income which accrues or arises in India. Hence, the income which accrues or arises out of India, the same is not chargeable to tax in the hands of the SSE. In view of the above, any income which accrues and arises out of India which includes the income deposited in HSBC Bank, Geneva is not liable to be taxed in the hands of the SSE as per provisions of section 91 of the Income Tax Act. Thus, it was prayed that there is no reason that the case should be reopened and requested to drop the reopening proceedings. These objections, however, did not impress the AO. He rejected the objection taken by the SSE and passed the assessment order under section 143.3 read with section 147 of the Income Tax Act 1961 confirming the addition. Agreed by the order of the AO, SSE appealed before the CITA on the ground that reassessment proceedings were bad in law but without any success. CITA also upheld the validity of reassessment proceedings and addition and declined to interfere in the matter. The SSE therefore filed appeal before Honorable ITAT. Considering the various submissions made by the appealant and by the department, it was held by the Honorable ITAT that in the light of detailed reasons analyzed as also bearing in mind entirety of the case the correctness of the reopening of the assessment on the facts of this case and in the light of settled legal position cannot be faulted with. Accordingly, the Honorable ITAT confirmed the action of the AO on this point of reassessment and declined to interfere in the matter. Now I will discuss with you the main point of contention in this appeal in respect of addition in hands of the SSE of rupees 196.47 crore being an amount equivalent to 3.97 crore US dollars held by HSBC private bank Geneva Switzerland 
in the name of Tharani Family Trust, of which the SSC was a beneficiary. Fact of the case are that the SSC is an individual. The SSC filed her income tax return, disclosing an income of rupees one lakh seventy thousand eight hundred for the relevant previous year. But subsequently, the investigation being of the income tax department received information. That the SSC is having a bank account with HSBC Private Bank SA Geneva. Based on this information, the case was reopened for fresh assessment on 30th October 2014. When the SSC was confronted with the information so received by the AO, the SSC submitted to the assessing officer that Mrs. Renu Tharani, the SSC has neither been an account holder of HSBC. Nor a beneficial owner of any assets deposited in the account with HSBC Private Bank Switzerland during the last ten years. It was further stated that HSBC Private Bank has also confirmed that GWU Investment Limited was holder of the account number one four one four double seven one, and according to these records. GWU Investment Limited used to be an underlying company of Tharani Family Trust, for which Mrs. Renu Tharani was a discretionary beneficiary, and that the Tharani Family Trust was terminated, and none of the assets deposited with them were distributed to Mrs. Renu Tharani. It was further stated that it is now very clear that Mrs. Renu Tharani does not hold any account with HSBC Private either in Geneva. Or any other place in Switzerland, hence the base note issued by AO is inaccurate as she does not have any account with HSBC Bank Geneva. It was also submitted that HSBC Bank in Geneva may have asked GWU Investment Limited the proof of identity as well as proof of address of all the beneficiaries. The company may have provided my passport as proof of my identity. And proof of address. It was further submitted by the SSC before AO that as the address mentioned in my passport is that of Mumbai, hence the base note states the same address. It was also submitted that as the SSC does not maintain any bank account with HSBC Private Bank in Switzerland, the question of explaining any source of deposit does not arise. The HSBC. Private bank also confirmed the fact in their letter dated 5 January 2015 that according to their best of knowledge, Tharani Family Trust (GWU Investment Limited) has been terminated, and none of the assets deposited with HSBC Bank were distributed to Mrs. Renu Tharani. None of these submissions impressed the assessing officer, and. He rejected the submissions made by the SSC and made an addition of rupees one ninety six point four seven crore, being an amount equal to US dollar three point nine seven crores. A grieved SSC appealed before CITA but did not succeed. Learned CITA confirmed the addition made by the AO. Then the SSC approached. Before the Honorable ITAT, the SSC submitted before Honorable ITAT that when the account did not belong to the SSC, there is no question of SSC being in a position to furnish any evidence in respect of the same. She does not have information whatsoever about the source of the deposits in this account and the assets held therein. The account is held. With GWU Investment Limited, with which SSC has no relationship, the SSC is at best a beneficiary of the discretionary trust settled by GWU Investment Limited. But then, in such an eventuality, the question of taxability would arise only at the point of time when the SSC actually receives any money from the trust. The SSC does not have any account with the HSBC Private Bank, and yet SSC is treated as owner of the account. 
the statement of account is of the investments and it is treated as a bank account. The SSC is a non resident, taxable in India in respect of its income earned in India, and yet the SSC is being taxed in respect of an account which undisputably has no connection with India. If at all, it has tax implication anywhere in the world. This liability is in the jurisdiction of which the SSC is a resident. The SSC is taxable only on disbursement of the benefits to the beneficiary, but then the beneficiary is being taxed in respect of the corpus of the trust. On the other hand, the DR argued and submitted before the ITAT that. It is a case in which a specific information has come in the possession of the government of India through official channels, and this information categorically indicates that the SSE was beneficiary and beneficial owner of a particular account which had peaks asset worth US dollars 3.97 crores. The genuineness of this account is not in doubt. And has not even been challenged by the SSE. It was further submitted by the department before ITAT that the income tax department has discharged its burden of proof by bringing on record authentic information received through government channels about the bank relationships which were unaccounted in India and unaccounted abroad. The fact of Swiss bank accounts. Being operated through conduit companies based in tax havens is a common knowledge and seen in the slide. If the SSE has an account for her benefit in a Swiss bank, whether she operates her directly or through a web of proxies, the natural presumption is that this is her money which she must account for. All that the SSE says is that she has no idea as to who did it and passes on the blame. To a Cayman Island based company which was operating the said account. But then Cayman Island company cannot be a person unconnected with the SSE. It is inconceivable that a rank outsider will be generous enough to put that kind of huge money at her disposal or for her benefit. But as a beneficiary, she is expected to know the related facts to which she alone knows. The Honorable ITAT observed. That it is also important to recall the backdrop in which the information about SSE's account with the HSBC private bank was received by government of India. That will also refresh memories and certain undisputed facts about HSBC private bank Geneva scandal, as it is often referred to. In 2006, after a whistleblower named Harvey Falkini. An employee of HSBC Private Bank Geneva walked out with information of thousands of accounts involving wealth hidden from taxmen. The bank came under the glare of multiple regulators for helping wealthy individuals hide millions. The employee fled to France, and in June 2011, the French government shared the data of Swiss bank accounts with countries such as India, US. UK, Canada, and Australia. That is how government of India got the information about a large number of cases and this HSBC bank scandal involving unaccounted money stressed away in Swiss bank accounts was also subject matter of a special investigation team set up under the chairmanship of former Supreme Court Judge Honorable Justice M.B. Shah. The tribunal further observed. That the action of the HSBC private bank have not gone unnoticed so far as law enforcement agencies are concerned. It has to face criminal investigations in several parts of the globe and had to pay millions of dollars in settlement for its lapses. A rather recent press release dated 10 December 2019 from the US Department of Justice. Which indicates the nature of aftermath it had to face and the collusion it had in systematic tax evasion by unscrupulous taxpayers from different parts of the world.
as per Department of Justice of US, HSBC Bank admits to helping US taxpayers conceal income and assets from the United States and agrees to pay US dollars $192.35 million as penalty. The ITIT further observed that we must take note of the fact that the SEC had, in response to a specific request from the AO, declined to sign consent waiver so as to enable the income tax department to obtain all the necessary details from the HSBC private bank Geneva. The net effect of not signing the consent waiver form is that the AO is deprived of opportunity to seek information from the bank in respect of SSE's bank account. If she had nothing to hide, there was no reason for not signing the consent waiver form. All that the consent waiver form does is waiver any objection to the furnishing of information relating to SSE's bank account, that is, HSBC Private Bank Geneva in this case. It is necessary to take note of the above position so as to understand that the SSE has not come with clean hands and quite to the contrary, the SSE had made conscious effort to scuttle income tax departments and or to get at the truth. It is thus clear that when an SSE declines to give consent waivers about a bank information being collected, the SSE effectively stalls further investigation about the same, ITAT observed. IDAD further observed that it is an interesting coincidence, coincidence if it is, that within a short time of the information about the above account coming to the possession of the government of India, this account was closed. Whatever assets were being held in this bank account were thus transferred back to GW Investment Limited, a company based in Cayman Islands a tax haven where it is almost impossible to find out about the beneficial owners of a corporate entity. Also, ITAT observed that it must also be a coincidence, coincidence if it could be that the process of covering the tax did not stop with closure of the HSBC account. It is further coincidence that even the GWU Investment Limited after the disclosure in respect of account was closed and its name is stuck from the records of registrar of companies Cayman Islands. The operations carried out by these entities are mainly to facilitate financial maneuvering for the benefit of its client or with that predominant underlying objective to give the color of genuineness to these entities. These offshore entities which are routinely used to launder unaccounted monies are a fact of life and as much a part of the underbelly of the financial world as many other evils ITT observed. It is also inconceivable that a rupees 200 crore beneficiary in a trust will not know about who has settled that trust. Very important remark made by ITAT that as a final fact finding authority, this tribunal cannot be a superficial in its assessment of genuineness of a transaction and our call is to be taken not only in the light of the face value of the documents cited by the SSE, but also in the light of all the surrounding circumstances, preponderance of the human probabilities and ground realities. It does require the tribunal to take a holistic view of the matter in the light of the surrounding circumstances, preponderance of probabilities and ground realities rather than being swayed by the not so convincing but apparently in order statements and letters and examining them in a pedantic manner with the blinkers on. ITAT made very important remark about Cayman Islands that the SSE is not a public personality like Mother Teresa, that some unknown person with complete anonymity will settle a trust to give her US dollar 4 millions and in any case Cayman Islands is not known for philanthropies operating from there. If Cayman Island is known for anything relevant, it is known for an atmosphere 
conducive to hiding unaccounted wealth and money laundering and that does not advance the case of the SSE. ITAT observed, this is a jurisdiction which has doubled the number of companies then resident, most of which remain only on paper and it will be no naive to believe that these companies are located here in a country with around 65,000 residents for bona fide core activities rather than the benefit of anonymity, secrecy and liberal. The only persons who are privy to vital information about these transactions are the persons who are privy to these transactions maybe as owner, as settler, as beneficiaries or as facilitators or even as accomplice in these maneuverings and when they decline to share the correct information and thought for the probe in the matter, investigation reach a cool de sac. The ITAT also made important remark about HSBC Bank that the HSBC private bank is an organization with a globally established track record of hoodwinking tax authorities worldwide. It was held by ITAT that for the reasons set out and as evident from the base note, the SSE is beneficial owner of GW Investment Limited Cayman Islands. There is nothing to controvert this fact stated in the base note and since the SSE has declined consent waiver in this case, the SSE cannot decline correctness of the details obtained from HSBC private bank. ITAT therefore held that we approve the conclusions arrived at by the learned CITA and declined to interfere in the matter. The addition of rupees 196.47 crores in respect of SSE's account with HSBC Private Bank Geneva is thus confirmed. Keep watching this space for more interesting videos shortly. Stay healthy and safe.